Good morning. Welcome. I'm Sanford Cohen from Arizona's Hometown Radio Group, and it is my pleasure to act as your master of ceremonies for this ribbon-cutting celebration for the center of the future. Uh, I want to first of all uh, recognize a few people in attendance, and uh, you will also be hearing from some of them. Uh, first of all, uh, we want to welcome from uh, Senator Kristen Sinema's office, Indira Ganala. Um, we're going to have, uh, we'll have Dr. Haas uh, handle the presentation. And also from uh, Congressman Paul Gosar's office, Jeff Tim is here as well. <laughs> Representing the Yavapai County Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Harry Oberg. <laughs> Representing Governor Ducey, uh, Ryan Murray, Deputy Arizona Homeland Security Representative. And uh, also representing the Arizona Commerce Authority, Randy Gustafson. From the Arizona Cybersecurity Team, Frank Grimmelman. He's in hiding. Being secure. That's good. Um, also uh, representing uh, one of the partners putting on today's event, the Prescott Chamber of Commerce, CEO Sherry Heine. Uh, another partner representing uh, uh, NACOG, it's uh, Danny Jaime is here. And from the city of Prescott, Mayor Greg Mangarelli. Councilman Steve Blair, Councilman Phil Good, and City Manager Michael Lamar. Oh, and Kathy Rusing is here from the Prescott City Council, too. And Alexa Scholl from the Prescott City Council, as well. And Clark Tony from the uh, from the Prescott City Council as well. I'm only as good as my material. All right. Well, with that, uh, we wanted to say a special thank you to our media partner this morning, uh, City of Prescott Communications Office, and Robert Milligan, who is filming uh, today's dedication ceremony. Also, a huge thank you to our volunteer photographer, Bob Shanks. Thank you both very much for being here today. And uh, so with that, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Dr. John Haas to come up and uh, tell you about the Center for the Future. Well, thank you all. Whoa, it's hot. Um, Thank you all for coming today. This has been a long time coming, and what I'd like to do is kind of have some words from the folks that have come. We have uh, Inder from the Senator's office. We've got Jeff Tim from Paul Gosar's office. Uh, Harry Oberg is gonna say a few words, and we're gonna get a few words from Mayor Mangarelli, and then I'd like to invite all of you to learn more about it, because I'll wax for a little while. And then we'll do the ribbon cutting, and then up in 220, which has been newly renovated and beautifully done, they put the last bit of paints on this morning. Um, come up there, we've got some snacks and cold waters, and so we'll go ahead and do that. So I'd like to first get Ender up here and, and have him tell us a little something from on behalf of Senator Simmons. Thank you so much. Good morning. Well, hey, it's great seeing everybody. Uh, just made the drive up from Phoenix. It's always good to do it on Maricopa County. Yeah. Um, but coming up here and always feeling the sense of community in Prescott uh, is always something that's so impressive. And the Center of the Future is going to be a great addition to this community. Um, you know, my boss and the Senator is always really focused on bringing really high wage, high income jobs uh, to the state. Technology jobs are a big part of that. So 
Uh, having that diversification across our state, across our geographic areas is really important. Uh, so to, to come up and, and see an opening like this is, is great. And uh, I just want to thank everyone in the community that makes this possible. Um, for those who I, haven't, who I haven't had a chance to connect with yet, or if you haven't had a connect, chance to connect with our office yet, um, going to be sticking around afterwards. We'll have to say hi to you. So thanks so much, and uh, congratulations. Good luck. And uh, I have a letter that was sent to us uh, on behalf of Senator Mark Kelly, who couldn't be here today. And it reads, I send this letter today to offer my congratulations on the opening of the Prescott Center for the Future. All your efforts and collaboration make this an important day for the Prescott area business community. Innovation and growth of key technology industries will create jobs of the future. The center's focus on startup and early stage tech companies will provide Northern Arizona with a diverse and sustainable business sector and will lead to the continued economic success of the area. Your dedication and hard work have come to fruition. I look forward to visiting with you the next time I am Prescott, I, I'm in Prescott to your continued success, Senator Mark Kelly. Now I have Jeff come up. Thank you, John. Um, this uh, is high tech jobs are very important to our growth up here. And uh, this Center for uh, Center for the Future is uh, definitely going to be a big part of attracting those type of jobs. And on behalf of the Congressman John, I want to present this certificate of appreciation awarded to the Center for the Future for your entrepreneurial spirit and business contribution to Prescott, Arizona, this 13th of July, signed by the Congressman. Thank you so much, John, for what you've done. Well, thanks. That's great. And I know that next week he's up in town, so we'll be meeting at some event. Uh, so we'll be able to talk to him in person. And now I'd like to get Supervisor Harry Oberg up here because he's been a big part of this. When he was mayor, way back in 2016, I told him about this uh, idea when Frank Ayers, the former chancellor, was here. And Harry has been a big supporter. Good morning, everybody. He just took all my, everything I was going to say. So. <laughs> Why don't I just get straight to giving the certificate? No, I'll say a few words. Uh, and when I was mayor back in 1617, uh, I was working with Jim Robb, who was our uh, economic development uh, coordinator. And uh, we were looking at the fact that we have a lot of students that go through our universities and colleges here, and they were not staying here. And one of the things we wanted to do was to figure out what can we do to find opportunities for them here. And we started talking about uh, a business incubator. And um, so we got with uh, Frank Ayers, Chancellor of Emory Riddle, and asked him if that was something that he'd be willing to pursue. And it took some time, and uh, he finally got very interested in it. And he actually started to look at uh, having some property on Emory Riddle uh, dedicated to a business incubator. And also, we also had some plans for about a two or three story building. I can't remember right now. I think it was right, right around 30,000 square feet. Um, obviously, when he uh, left and went back to um, Florida, then that idea uh, kind of died as far as uh, using Ember Riddle. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we continue to pursue it, and uh, I have to give great credit to the current uh, mayor and council that have pushed forward and made sure that this, this thing actually reached fruition. And I think this is going to be of great value to the community, and I look forward to supporting you from the, from the Board of Supervisors. And I would like to go ahead and present this uh, certificate to you from the Board of Supervisors. Acknowledge the Center of the Future is a Prescott Regional Opportunity Foundation that's officially open for business. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you. And now uh, for our wrap up, uh, we have oh, Mayor Mangarelli is gonna say a few words, thank you. Thank you, John. Well, this is a, a great day. I don't think we really realize how big this moment is to see this thing really take off. When I first started hearing about an incubator, you have to understand I'm from Kansas, and my dad used to use an incubator to hatch eggs in the chickens. But maybe there is a good correlation here uh, because we're seeing these businesses locally hatch into uh, full-fledged businesses and and uh, what a great opportunity here in Prescott. 
you know, we, we haven't been as diverse as we wanted to be with our jobs, and this really creates diversity. It also keeps our intellectual capital in the city. I've heard Jim Robb say this so many times to the point that he would get emotional and almost cry about seeing all of our Embry-Riddle, Yavapai College, Prescott College students leaving the city. And so this is a big day, Jim, uh, where we get to keep these young people, in many cases, here in our city. You know, there's been a ton of different concepts we've talked about regarding this. Uh, from a new building with, with other entities, and it's gonna be here and there and everywhere. And finally, uh, our city manager, Michael Lamar, a number of months ago, uh, asked me to come into his office and he said, I've got an idea. What if we take the motel and turn it into our incubator right away? And I thought from the time he said it, it made so much sense that we take this small step and with a facility that really didn't need a lot, maybe a little paint this morning, uh, but, but, but to really get it off the ground and, and to see it come to fruition. And John, thank you for your leadership here recently and what you've done. A tremendous job, great person to be leading the Center for the Future. So glad that you're with, with us and on board and you're doing a tremendous job. I look forward in the coming years to see this thing blossom and grow and we can have chickens that are laying their own eggs. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you so much. I'm going to try and do this uh, briefly. Oh. oh, that's right. Next is the chamber presentation. Hopefully, I, somebody's paying attention. Thank you. Um, I pretty much echo this exciting uh, new venture that has we've all been listening about. and. So on behalf of the Chamber Board and the Chamber of Commerce, I would like to present the Certificate of Special Recognition to the Center for the Future. And um, we're very grateful for the partnership that the Center has with the Chamber Foundation as well. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, perfect segue because, as you all know, it takes a, a real village uh, to make this happen. So I'm going to uh, thank a few people, but I'm going to probably leave some people out. Uh, but there's some I have to call out in specific. For instance, Jim Robb's name has already been said, but I think he needs to give a round of applause. Sometimes we've, we've knocked on people's doors and said, hey, pay attention. And it would not be possible except for we have a great board of directors and we have Rosa Sosa, there she is, also on the board of directors. And Mike McCormick, CEO of CP Technology, couldn't be here today, but he is joining our board. And he's a great spokesman because he's telling us, why would you bring a company from San Diego, California to Prescott, Arizona? So he's gonna be an important marketing spokesperson to help us grow this beyond the companies that there are today. So this is the phase one of the Center for the Future. And we are part of and a project of the Prescott Regional Opportunity Foundation. But someone else really helped us. That's Sherry Heine and the Prescott Chamber Foundation. The Chamber Foundation has been around for about eight years. They're a 501c3. And as our fiscal sponsor, we can immediately take donations and give people letters. Plus, we can apply for grants that need three years of financials. Well, we're a startup. We don't have three years of financials, but they do. And so we've applied for EDA grants, USDA grants, and we've got another one underway right now. Money from the federal government that, as we know, we need to get a piece of right here in Prescott. I want to also uh, recognize a few people who have been donors. Right up here, Ray and Patty Newton were among our first donors, so thank you so much, Ray. Uh, right in the back there, I just got a text from Dr. Hojat Askari, who was lost, but I gave him the address, so he's on his way. So we want to recognize them. And I also want to note that a few people came and sponsored to help us. So Brad Casper of Heart and Soul Marketing, we have some representatives here. Uh, so he helped do that, and Jim Romp again helped 
as well as Feel Good. Thank you so much for helping to uh, make sure that uh, that gets too. Uh, of course, today we would have clouds, right? But it's still nice to be underneath the tent. So I want to also recognize some of the people that are partners in the building. So right here we've got uh, Eric um, Knight, who is the CEO of Simple Wan. So Simple Wan's right here in these two suites. We've got Joe Sabini right here, um, and uh, he is leading up SEG, an Axiant subsidiary. And those folks are going to grow into something fantastic. And so we're really happy. So upstairs, we've got CyberCore International. Uh, Gabe Navarrete, an 84 alum of Embry-Riddle, is not here with us today. He's taking care and doing security for some very important people in Southern California who are from an entirely different country. So we want to bring that kind of global security here to our organization because we've proven that we can do a lot of this work remotely. Uh, we also have um, uh, Jim McJunkin uh, representing, uh, right in the back, um, representing GSIS. Uh, it's an Arizona company that has outlets in Washington, D.C., in Chicago, uh, in Portland, Oregon, and now here in Prescott, Arizona. Uh, so we also have um, NUCO, which is a real startup, and Paul Riljack here, the founder and CEO of a NUCO that is being born from the ashes of an older company. So we're really excited. Not really the real thing. So uh, you can learn more. We're going to have some uh, little refreshments upstairs, and there's air conditioning. Um, and we have some propaganda, I mean, uh, collateral um, uh, there and up on the tables upstairs. Hey, Can you do one minute on the cyber warfare right now? Yes, yes. Um, I wanted to tell you, uh, because as we do the tour, in Suite 103 right there in 216, you'll see a lot of servers. And you'll wonder, what the heck are all these servers doing? They're in piles. To be tested, production, development, they might work, and going to e-waste. We have these files, but those will become the cyber warfare range that will allow people, students, as well as adults, and people that may want to change jobs because there are now about 450,000 open positions in cybersecurity in the United States. We can't fill those unless we do something really different. And the warfare range offers something so that people can learn how to defend and attack. You say, why should we learn to attack? If we don't know how we're being attacked, how can we defend against it? So we are being able to do that, and we'll be moving it from there up to 220, now that the final paint has been put on the, the 220 building. So you'll see uh, that development. I want to thank also, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, um, but uh, Stephanie at Obabe has uh, really helped out. She's done, done some great work in our social media. Because today, you've got to be on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and, and I'm not really a person, believe it or not, I don't do those network things, I do another kind of networking, like IPv6 and IPv4, much more boring. Uh, this one connects to people. And connecting with people is what the Center for the Future is about. And all of you are a part of it. And all of you will be what makes it turn from an idea to a phase one to something that we can look back on and say, oh my gosh, wasn't it great that we started that? in 2021. So everyone should give yourselves a big hand, and I think then we'll just do a little uh, ribbon cutting ceremony, and I'll have some of the folks come up from the various uh, speakers that could come up so that we can do the clip of the ribbon. Thank you all for being here.